Hey, buddies, Potato Bikuski here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Greece, where we are going for the Bermuda Triangle game. And I'm talking fast because I am pretty damn hyped for how much fun this game has been. We have an insane amount of science thanks to the Bermuda Triangle. We have cracked out three really fast cities, and I'm trying like a little bit of an unorthodox strategy where you go for three districts before you start expanding again. Normally, when I play the game, I will go for... Um, just like mass settler, 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 settler. I kind of wanted to like mix things up a little bit. So we went for a fast reina. We're going for fast harbors. And I think it's really enabled by the fact that we have this science. So it's kind of like, you know, we're trying things out. This means we're not as far behind as we would normally be. We're still behind because Simon Bolivar is on 40 science per turn. But I think um, probably when the city gets to about six population, I'll grab another one of these Bermuda tiles and then we'll be off to the races. Let us grab ourselves mathematics i think it's getting close to the point in the game where we want to have a diplomatic quarter especially as greece um a diplo quarter can make or break your game so maybe well actually do we care i think i would like to build two galleys in order to get shipbuilding done i think i definitely want to build a pasture so i'm going to what i'm going to do is in reina city i'm going to buy a builder I'm going to come over here. I want to explore the water a little bit. I wish for you to leave. He's not going to leave, is he? No, he's not. He's stuck there. Hold on. Maybe if I step away, he'll leave. We have a harbor in Spedercast. We can go ahead and immediately begin work on the lighthouse. We can immediately begin a harbor. This is one of the greediest openers ever. I don't even know. It's probably not even good, to be honest with you. Um, but let's go ahead and get... Now, hmm, do I chop or do I mine first? Here's the thing. This is worth 19 food and 19 production right now. I think the one food from the from the jungle here is actually worth keeping, especially in a coastal city that is going to have a harbor and like a ton of tiles to work. I think keeping this plus one food on this mine is worth it. I think it's worth it. I think I think I'm 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 off the chop train today for for this. Not without Magnus in the city. There's political philosophy. Beautiful. We have a government of dreams. Now, if we're rushing districts, then classical republic has a lot of value because that plus one housing and plus one amenity and the 15% great people points kind of really stacks nicely with a district rush build. So I think we'll go for classical republic. And now we have potentially six cards in our government, which is insane. So we can actually have two military cards plugged in. No problemo. I don't know if there's great scientist points i don't know if plugging in great scientist points will be fruitful for us um possibly plugging in other things i think we can plug in plus two gold from trade route settler production builder production and then charismatic leader seems totally fine although diplomatic league potentially but i would say we're off to a, a fairly strong start here um, so thinking about our follow-up to political philosophy, I usually like to rush for feudalism for the plus two builder charges, but this particular game, I really want to go mausoleum. Is it really a potato McWhiskey game if I don't for, go for harbors like Fish Pantheon and Mausoleum? Like I have I have one <laughs> I have one way to generate cool YouTube thumbnails, and it's those three things. <laughs> Look at my coastal yields, mausoleum, soy. <laughs> this is what I have I have one play that I do every no dude. Dude, the iron oh no the iron actually ruined my acropolis damn womp womp well look this game is such a high roll anyway that like something had to hold us back we'll move the acropolis over here it'll be a slightly worse one it'll be a little bit worse it's not the end of the universe it's the end of me uh, we'll we'll figure out where to put our diplo quarter later Good industrial zone, though. Potentially, we could go industrial zone, the capital, but we're not going to. We'll pop a pasture right there. There we go. And that's a three food, two production tile. That's a good tile. It's a really damn good tile. I really wish for this warrior to, like, move. I don't know. He's just stuck in a time loop. Go auto explore for me. You have another iron next to your planned Acropolis. It's true. Make Chichen Itza southeast of Acropolis way better. I mean, one two three four five that's a five and we do have pretty good culture i mean it's a five rainforest chichen itza that's not bad that's 10 culture and five production like that's not bad return on investment for a wonder that is like 700 production maybe maybe we shall see about that one. We have our lighthouse completed. 
Let's go ahead and purchase the trade. We'll purchase the trader next turn. We don't want to waste time building a trader. We want to build things that are um, a little bit more important. Edamanank. Wait, what? This isn't gone yet? It's turn 61 and nobody built Edamananki? What is happening? Who is who's running this game? This isn't the AI that I know. Apadana is still here. Oracle is still here. What? What is happening? I I I I need to like take a moment, do a hail mary, and just like prevent myself from going for wonders all game. Um, because it's time to settle. It's really time for Government Plaza, but it's also time to settle. When is it worth paying for traders? It's always worth paying for traders. Traders pay themselves off like. The, the rate of return on a trader is insane. Eight gold per turn. Um, what is it? A trader costs me 210 gold. Uh, eight gold per turn. Trader pays himself off in like 25 turns. And then from then on pays out profit. Yeah, traders are just, in my opinion, it's always worth it to buy traders. Because they increase your gold income instantaneously. Um, and begin paying themselves off basically instantaneously. So placing that mine, I think, got me the boost for ironworking. I would like to get a boost for apprenticeship. I've got a few boosts I would like to get. Building a quarry would be a good one. But the real advantage of buying a trader is that I get to have the benefit of having a trader without having to have built a trader. Um, that's like the big thing. Now, do I have an envoy with Taruga? I do not. It might be worth it to pay or wait to be able to plug in double envoys. Is that really going to make a difference? Is that really going to make a difference? Ooh, she's forward settling me. So this settler now becomes a lot more relevant. Let's trade. I want to preserve my gold. I I don't think plus one envoy is that big of a deal. We'll, we'll get it eventually. Which Kublai is it? It's the angry Kublai, the Mongolia one. The Kublai who smells blood in the water. <laughs> um, so I need to get a settler out over here to block. And if I'm going to do that, probably there-ish. So I think I'm going to settle there. One, two, three, maybe settle somewhere here. Not sure which tile. One, two, three, settle there-ish. One, two, three. Um, and then maybe another city somewhere up and around here. This is kind of the empire I'm setting out here. One, two, three, four, five. Five more cities. That's like, a, I would say that's a reasonably sized empire. That's an empire of reasonable mass. Uh, there's mathematics. We have Petra. Plus one movement on naval units. I don't like that these trade routes are going over the land. That actually kind of bothers me a little bit. Um, oh my god, my scout is stuck. We're not going to be able to do archery. Uh, we'll grab wheel as well. Man, we are burning through that tech tree at this rate. Compared to normal games, he's up to 76 tech per turn. What's happening? My god, how much is it for me to buy a settler? 560 gold, Jesus Christ. Truffles. You want to buy my truffles? You want to buy my amber? We're selling off our luxuries. There's archery done. We're sitting on an envoy. Uh, I think I'll hold on to this envoy. I don't have a use for it. I don't get benefit from using it right now. We could retrade with Cahokia, or we could start trading with Anshin. I feel that having suzerainty of Cahokia long term would be cool, but also getting a trade route to Anshan opens up options for me in the late game and gets me up to that third envoy. So when we do go for science buildings, maybe we can make a difference. I reckon we pop. I think this settler is going deep towards you. And we're just, we're, we're cranking out settlers right now. We're getting as many settlers as possible to try and just crank and, and get control of the game here. Um, we did a very, very greedy opener, which was a low expansion opener, right? We got two cities really fast, and then we built districts. So this is like a very tall uh, and dangerous opener. But we're in a very, very precarious time. We just got wheels. We have access to chariots. Uh, let's research text that we have already boosted so we can preserve time to potentially boost more. I'm sitting on over 500 gold right now. I could buy another settler in a few turns. Is it worth it to buy a settler or would I rather buy something else? Let me have a think about that. I probably buy myself a builder. I'd like to get, I would like to farm a resource. I would like to build a quarry and I would like to build three mines. So there's a quarry. Um, where's my farmable resource? I don't see a farmable resource for me except over here at this rice. So that might be a little bit later. Let's see. Oh, he's trapped here because he's stuck behind my border. I didn't realize that. I didn't, my, didn't, my brain didn't put two and two and two together. I could probably pop him off by buying that tile. I also have plenty of money for buying of tiles. Let's have a look. What are you working? You're working two, one, two, one, two, 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 two. Let's buy a two, two tile. Boom. We bought the two, two tile. Perfect. City is now ever so slightly better. Significantly better, actually. Plus one production per turn is quite good. We could get a friendship with Bolivar. Hello. 
friendship. Nice to meet you, buddy. Yeah, I'm trying to think. So maybe a builder in this city. We can get a quarry and a couple of mines. Open up two uh, Eurekas. Bada bing, bada boom. Huge hurricane just swept through here. Didn't really do damage, though. This isn't a very good city if I settle it here, is it? Aha, uh -huh, but there is a really good campus right there. Another plus four campus. Hello. I think I'm going to save to buy this lighthouse in this city. Yeah, I think I think I think I'll buy. I'll I'll, I'll do that. Uh, let's pop down. I'm actually going to quarry here. There's masonry advanced, which is another era score, which is, you know, a step closer to a normal slash golden age. We'll end our turn. Harbors on the way. There's iron working. You go ahead and pop yourself down right there. You run over here to scout. I've got my light lighthouse in here. I think a lighthouse, I believe, is 480 gold, I think, to purchase. So I'll buy a lighthouse in here in two turns. And then I'll start buying scouts in Spettercass. How fast could I build a settler? 16 turns. Uh, I need one, two, three, four, five settlers. So I think I can justify one settler in Spettercast to sort out this city here. My goal is to get as many of my cities down now as early as possible. I need to find places where I can put mines without spending gold um, so that I can boost a tech. I don't know how early the Acropolis is going. It's probably Acropolis is probably going down next, which is like a problem for me. I have one. I have two mines, so I can actually if I chop and then place a mine here, I think I'm good. Um, am I ready to place the mausoleum? Not yet. So this city was already renamed. I'll pop it down. Boom. Uh, Gnosis is being renamed to Edmonds. And now city renames are open, but only when I actually settle the cities, please. We got our harbor in here. My plan is to purchase this. I need like 30 gold. Can I like pick up 30 gold? Yeah, I'll buy. Well, do I want to sell these to Dido is the thing. Yeah, you know, let me double check. Does Dido have access to these resources already? Dido already has access to these resources. I, I do a deal with the devil. Sell the devil the iron and horses that you need to use to defend yourselves. Get that 150 gold. Immediately purchase yourself a lighthouse. Be up to four trade routes and turn 74 extremely fast. Grab ourselves uh, a hoplite. And the city is growing slow. It needs a builder. Didn't mean to click there. I meant to click there. Um, what am I building in here? I probably need a builder. I need to want to build the infrastructure. I guess if I chopped out a watermill, that's not a bad one. It's plus one food, plus one food, one production. It's basically like, imagine a watermill is like spending AD production and working a plane style for the rest of the game. It's not a terrible move. It's not like great use of your production, but the return on investment is like relatively okay long term. Alternatively, I could chop at a trader. I think chopping at a trader is like a little bit more highbrow. Edmonds. Now this city, the harbor rush is a little bit less important. This city will serve as my bulwark for science. So I'm thinking of rushing um, an encampment in here. It will do something a little bit like this. It'll have good gold and lots of trade routes, but it'll be more of a militaristic city. So I'll spend 64, place down the encampment and get that encampment super early. Well, super early. Early. This city's going to need help in the form of builders from other cities. We have access to our first great admiral. I don't necessarily care. I'm going to pass on this one. Themistocles is a little bit better. Yeah, I'll take Themistocles. Uh, the reason I didn't build on this tile, because I would kind of hope that I could put an Acropolis there as Greece. Let's go. It's a me, a Mario. Yeah, we want the water mill. Let's get to work on apprenticeship. I think I think this should actually be a water mill because I want the boost. For the, well, I, don't, I think it's too late for the boost, actually. There's a trader. We want to put it to our capital because trade routes... Wait, wait what? Ah, oh, it goes over the water, so it's worth more. Landmarks along the way. Districts in Cahokia. Water trade routes are way better, is the thing that we have to keep in mind here. I know you guys can't exactly see what I'm looking at here. 15 and 14 gold versus 5 and 9. And I think... This is primarily a land trade route. This is a water trade route. This is a water trade route. So water trade routes are just better. They're not just better, they're just better. So we're going to take the 15 gold trade route with uh, Cahokia here. Boom. It's a lot of gold per turn. We'll immediately recruit to Mysticles. And we will use him to create a quadrireme. Because we could, if we can get a kill with the quadrireme, which is unlikely, we could do some interesting stuff. 
Um, let's head head you up here. One, two, three. So I can settle pretty much on any of these tiles that I feel like. So if I were to design an ideal city that would take advantage of all of these tiles, what would it look like? That's a tough question, even on a bad day. It probably looks like something like this. It probably have a harbor. It would probably have a commercial hub. It would probably have like an Acropolis. And then maybe something like this, but like rearranged to make a little bit more sense. So if we're going to rearrange this to make a little bit more sense, maybe we move the city center over here one tile. We move the harbor over here a tile like so. And we move the commercial hub over here a tile. Slightly worse Acropolis, slightly better campus feels a little bit more sensible room for potential farm triangles leaves a hill open potential quarry a weak city to be sure um but if i get it settled early i think i block out any of this dido nonsense there's the mine boosting apprenticeship we've secured a normal age but not a golden age oh wait no is it did i i don't know i need 41 or above to get a golden age hello hello i don't know what you wanted but you only wanted my you just gave me gold basically uh, we're sitting on 360 gold, making 100 gold per turn, feeling pretty good. I would like to get myself another trader. I want to see if there's good trade routes in here. I'm going to do something a little weird. I'm going to buy this tile to kick him off and potentially open up coastal trades with the at least Taruga from my capital. I would like to be trading from my capital because that's where Reina is. Reina gives benefits. Unbelievably, somehow this land isn't connected. What is happening here? I, so she went up and around into the fog of war. I can kind of see it here and came this way. I thought this was the most direct route, but apparently up here is the most direct route. That's kind of crazy, uh, in my opinion. Edmunds is going to need builders sent to it at some point. Let's have a look at this trade route. Now I can trade over the water with Hattusa. It's only, wait, why is it so bad? Why is it only eight gold? It's like 15 gold from here. These are terrible trade routes. Hold on. Why are my trade routes so bad? Hey, move them over the color. I guess the Reina move here is just not paying off. I feel bad. That's a lot of units that I have now scouted. Very scary. All that time, the 300 warriors were guarding the wrong pass. True. They, I had my warriors on the wrong, the wrong spot. Now look at this. 12.6 gold from Taruga. Although the trade route does pass through the capital, which is kind of neat. Um, this feels like it was less gold than I was getting earlier. Am I crazy? Is this less gold? The trade route to Anshan and Ainuk is more. Insane. Dido is definitely coming for you, for me. Yeah, for sure. The second I see, the second I see these bad boys moving out, that's when I know it's lights out. All right. It's lights out. Um, so it's probably a good idea to get hoplites up soon. We are about to hit apprenticeship. This is a super early apprenticeship. Uh, my capital is about to hit six pot. Well, no, we're, we're, we're getting settles out first, right? Yeah, we're doing settling first. Around turn 100, you should have your, your empire fully settled, usually, I would say. It's like a pretty good standard. And we're, we're on par. We're on track for that. And then we can start infrastructuring. We're on 430 gold. There's apprenticeship. Perfect. Now we have access to the Man at Arms. So we could go straight to uh, Man at Arms on this guy which would make me pretty hard to break. I think that's a, a reasonable amount of money to spend on defense. Let's make our dedication. I think this dedication will be um, free inquiry again. I think my, uh, free inquiry again seems okay. We're getting some basic infrastructure out. Uh, let's do masonry. We have access to the mausoleum. Let's go feudalism. Um, so this is a super early mausoleum that we want to get down here. Let's go ahead and place the mausoleum. In the capital, mausoleum is now activated. We can immediately rush. It would take 27 turns. The production in my capital isn't amazing. It's pretty good at 15, but it's not amazing. I think if I were going to do that, I would like do something a bit more like this, maybe. How is that? Now it's down to 24 turns. That's a little bit more reasonable. Um, let's go ahead and take tax collector on Reina. And then we want to go contractor. Not having my government plaza is hurting me a little bit. Tax collector is great. It's an extra 10 gold per turn. We've got this city in position. And now do we want to make any last minute changes to it? I think this is like a pretty okay city. Everything has reasonably good adjacency. Um, the city of Rhodes. Let's get a monument and granary in here. I could also buy these things. 
like just straight up pay 500 gold and instantaneously um, have a better city, right? So now it's growing and expanding its population way faster. Grab a builder in here. Yeah, I'm going to invest a bit into roads to make it into a real city. To get that harbor up, those trade routes are key. Uh, I will say that Dido can generate more grievances and duplicates of which luxury resources? They'll probably vote diamonds. I don't know. It's always, it's kind of hard to tell what people will vote for because the AI uses information that I don't have access to to make this decision. So unless I found like a sufficient number of AIs, um, looks like gypsum was picked. So that's that. There's masonry. Perfect. That feels like a very early world Congress, which is all the more argument that we need to get that diplomatic quarter down. Man, I just so much stuff needs to be built in my capital. Um, and so little time. I think we have to cut off Chichen Itza at the source. There's not enough production to make it happen. The nice thing is I can buy a lot of my buildings in here um, and I can maybe get some of my outlier cities to take up the settler slack because one, two, three. Yeah, I think I, I think I can stop producing settlers in my capital now. We can start working on water mills. Scientifically, I'm still falling behind, but that's okay. Because we're having fun. We're playing with their Bermuda. We're not trying to do, we're not trying to be, we're not trying to like do some crazy overpowered insane build. We're just trying to do like a normal game, but have like, you know, the, the Bermuda and do some crazy like weird stuff where we rush, you know, lots of trade routes and have like an insane gold line super early into the game. Uh, Simon Bolivar, thank you. We shall send him aid. Gondor calls for aid and we have sent it. Send it. Um, now, what am I doing? So I need to kind of plan out these cities and what I'm doing. Like there's a really good harbor right there. However, that does preclude having a really good commercial hub here. And I think these are equally good harbors. Both are plus five. So I think this one wins out because it boosts the commercial hub. There's like an Acropolis here and perhaps a campus. Well, most of my scaling will come from scientific city states. So a campus will eventually fit in here. Uh, so let's have a look at the city of Kokomo. Ooh. Uh, you're going to make your way there. City of Kokomo has a lot of stuff it needs to do. First things first, I'll buy a granary just so the city grows a little bit faster. It has a little bit more housing room. Uh, I need to get this government plaza down, so we'll place it. Normally, I would like to chop the rainforest tile, but I think that's actually not worth my time this game. Um, the government plaza needs to be built. The mausoleum needs to be built. And potentially, some builders need to be done in here. So... What are we going to do with this city? I would love to do a lumber mill on this tile. It's two production. It's a big upgrade. Three turns on a builder, six turns on a government plaza. Six turns on the government plaza gets me to contractor on Reina, as does recorded history instead. How important is serfdom? We could delay serfdom to get contractor. I mean, that seems okay. Delaying served him to get contractor. And then we could just rush Mausoleum. God, the thumbnail ability of this city is going to be wild, dude. So our goal now is actually not to science. Our goal is to grow. So let's make sure we lock in all these really high food tiles. We need to pump population into the city so that we can use rain as gold to buy all the districts. So this is this is the gold. This is the Reina gold purchasing game right here. Enabled by the Bermuda Triangle. The Fio and Potato has a better IRL or a better economy than IRL Greece. True. So my capital is locked up for 20 turns. Edmonds needs help in the form of probably purchasing of at least a granary in here to let this, the population grow. I don't know what I clicked on there for the Columbia thing, um, but it was definitely a misclick. Let's go ahead and take Susan to have Cahokia. Yoink. Cahokia is mine now, which is quite nice because I do like Cahokia mounts. They're not bad. Amenities and housing and gold, those are all things you can make use of. But how is she cutting here? We have access to lumber mills. We definitely want aqueducts this game and dams. I want to build all of those in color, 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 whatever it's called. I don't know how to pronounce that city's name. Listen, somebody don't know that city's name. Doesn't mean I know how to pronounce it. Perfect. Drama and poetry. We have access to our Acropolis now. Very nice. We'll go ahead. We're throwing a city down on this tile. Melitos. Hey, time for a city rename. We've got two cities to rename. Ding, ding, ding. Get those, get those renames in, boys and girls. People of all ages. I think we're rushing harbors. This we're going. But this is a trade route game, right? We're rushing harbors in every city. We purchase the water mill that shaves six turns off of that. We buy the granary. We eventually buy more stuff. We're spending our money to try and accelerate our build um, in an interesting way by building the city center buildings. There's our second last settler. 
out. At least the second last settler for now. I think we can win on this the seven city build. So Spetter Cass. We want to do a mixture of science and culture now. We need a ramp. We need to hit the ramp running. Um, our Acropolises are like super powerful if we want to go for them. 10 turns for a super powerful Acropolis. Let's go ahead and buy the granary in this city. Building the Acropolis, building the Acropolis, building the Acropolis. Our culture is really weak. We could use an Acropolis, plus the envoys are really good. And long term, it'll start to pay off huge dividends for our science to have a really strong... Oh, why would you settle there? What is wrong with you, Dido? Now I have to buy these science tiles. This is just the AI in a nutshell. Every single time, every single time I'm having a fun game, the AI is just... Let me forward settle you. Thanks, AI. I appreciate it. Mid-game war to take... I Listen, this city is an affront to man and god, okay? And I am both. We must preserve the tiles. Right, we have engineering. We have access to aqueducts. Boom. Right. Tiles secured. It makes our borders look horrendous. But the tiles have been secured. We are sitting. Sitting pretty. Sitting happy. What's our next goal? We probably want to rush shipyards now at this point. So go like... Damn shipyard. Settle the city. Boom. We actually need to plan it a little bit. Um, the planning of this city is relatively straightforward, actually. I think it's literally just like Acropolis harbor um and then like a campus or something so this is like this is a very very straightforward easy city straight up build me harbors mausoleums on the way i need to use my gold on builders and stuff that isn't districts until i have reina and then i can use my gold on districts you need to make some boats listen boats don't give me science and culture <laughs> or gold i don't need to build anything i'm perfectly happy doing what i'm doing right now Things are coming along nicely. We have a ton. Like, we're being... This is, like, absurd levels of greed right now. Two turns until recorded history. And then we can buy another district as well. In the capital, perhaps we buy the government plaza. Get another thing. Uh, we're sitting on an envoy. Let's take control of Cahokia. Cahokia will be important for us long term because it gives us so much gold across our entire empire. It's like two to... What is it? Two to 12 gold per city or something like that. It's two plus four, six plus six. It's 12 gold per city in the late game. There's Leif Erikson. Not that I need Leif Erikson, but I can use him to explore, which is useful. It's almost as good as having a boat. Uh, we could promote to the Gilded Vault. We're not ready to build the Gilded Vault, so nobody really needs it. So instead, we'll go for Contractor. And now if we come to Kokomo, we can go ahead and gold purchase the government plaza and the Acropolis real cheap. Boom, instantaneous government plaza. So we can follow this up with the audience chamber that we're looking for. The Reina gold play is insane, dude. Holy crap. That's insane. What else? What would we buy next? Do we buy the commercial hub next? What does Bermuda in the title mean? It means this, baby. It means this Bermuda Triangle. This is the Bermuda Triangle game. Look at this science that we're getting. We definitely don't want to be working this, like, five science tile. Let's make sure we lock in. We're going to have to kind of micromanage our capital a little bit. Let's kind of actually deprioritize science so we manually work these tiles. Five science is great, but I think you can't sacrifice your whole empire to work the Bermuda, okay? You got to play sensibly. And now I can get Ritual and maybe go for a fast Gilded Vault in my capital. Boop, 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 boop. There's our last settler now out of Kolo Kredki. Um, and now we can start to think about how we advance the city. Oh, and if you're wondering why Bermuda Triangle is a natural wonder in Civilization VI, a game based in history, is because it came as part of the New Frontier Pass, which was like the alt history pass, right? Like the, the fantasy part. It, it, was, it was a fantasy expansion for Civ. That was the whole point. It was meant to introduce mechanics into the game that were only semi, like, you know, more imaginative than real. It's why the whole point of the, it's why there's literal meteor apocalypses. It's why you have secret societies. You have heroes and legends, right? It's a way to integrate some parts of human fantasy, historical fantasy into the game. Uh, so we're taking a look at this city and we really need to decide what we do with it. We're not ready for canals. I don't know if I'm ready for an industrial zone. We are heading for mass production. Like we're in that direction. So we could get early 
things going. I feel like an aqueduct would be good. I'm probably, you know what I need in here? I need like a builder. I need a builder to just go around, improve a few tiles, get things under control. Um, so crack me out a builder and then come back and talk to me later. So we've completed the Acropolis for the first time. And now that we've completed the Acropolis, it's probably a good time to talk about what it actually does. So if we come over here and we hover over the Acropolis, it is a unique district for Greece. It replaces the theater square and it's half price. So you can build, it takes half as much production so you get them twice as fast. So a lot cheaper to build. It gives you one envoy when you finished, so you have better city-state control, which synergizes really well with Pericles' bonus of plus five culture per city-state he has control of. We get plus one culture for each adjacent district and an additional plus one culture for a city center, so it's plus two for being adjacent to a city center. And then it has, otherwise it's a basically a standard theater square. It's just a good theater square. That's all it is. It's just a really good theater square. So if we're taking a look at this, there is a Temple of Artemis play here. Do I really want to do a Temple of Artemis instead of a dam? I don't think a Temple of Artemis here is very good. I do think builders are good. I think it's time for now for the builders to rise up. Time for them to make make their, their voices heard. I will put one point into Kamasi. And we are, we are chooching along at a beautiful, beautiful pace. Mausoleum is two turns from finishing. I'm sitting on 500 gold. So I need to think about how do I use this gold efficiently? I think efficiently, efficient use of my gold involves buying a builder in Edmonds. I know I'm really close to feudalism, but the sooner I get, I can't, like waiting eight turns for a builder, I think I get this builder now, I get two pastors up and a mine, and then this city actually, you know, has a future. Um, so a little, like a little bit of buildering right now, I think pays off um, long term. So I need to think about how this city is going to grow. Like, where is this city going to actually get the food that it needs to build one, two, three, three more districts? That's the real question I have to answer here. And if the answer is from the coast, that's a bad answer. So I think we need to we need to trim back this city's expectations here a little bit, I think. And I think the aqueduct is going to have to go. Uh, and the Ruhr Valley is going to have to go. So we're we're kind of scaling back a little bit here because this city just doesn't own enough tiles to actually do something useful. Dido doesn't hate me anymore, which is good news. Yields minus 25%. What the hell does that mean? I think getting my industrial zone like laid out nice and early would be a good move. Okay, so Mausoleum Halakarnassus. This is plus one science, plus one faith, plus one culture on all coast tiles for this city. Now, we absolutely, we just, we have to do it to them. We have to do it to YouTube. I know, okay, listen, all right, I know that this isn't the most effective use of my gold at this exact moment, but listen, can you deny that this is not, that this is not one of the most incredible, hold on, why am I here? Get me out of here. This is one of the most incredible thumbnails. Hey, let me, let me get real zoomed in. I get the perfect angle. Would you click on this YouTube video? You 100%, you, you, I know you. I make videos for you. You would click on this video. Okay? I know who I know who you are. Look at that. The combination of mausoleum and Bermuda Triangle in your capital city. That is a thing of beauty. Now, that's just gonna be, you know, this episode. This I think I'm pretty sure this entire YouTube series is just gonna be me evolving my capital. <laughs> like that's just all the screenshots are gonna be. Um, it's gonna be like first it's gonna be Bermuda Triangle, then it's gonna be this one. Next episode it's gonna be like shipyards plus fisheries, and then there's gonna be like seasteads in the late game. It's gonna be disgusting. But yeah, add the soy face and it's perfect. Is that was that the soy face? Let's settle our last city. Boom, she's a beauty. Fokea. Uh, it's a type of bread, I believe. Focaccia, perhaps. But it might not be the same thing, actually. Uh, but that's it. We're going to call that the end of this episode. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.